Please welcome Roslyn Kahn. I can't believe it's week five. Let's take a trip back and see the wonderful people we've had on our show before. We started with Tony Coffin with the standout star speaker. Next up was Nikki and John Snyder from the Pop and Drop Serving Los Angeles Community. Next, we went to Hollywood with Tommy Bull, the DGA, IMBD, and A-list director from Miami Vice and much more. Then we had writer and producer Dave Garber, an entertainer, a producer, a writer, and this week, a man who's truly touched my heart and soul. His name is Daniel Tyler Ponky. He's an international musician, writer, coach and speaker let's give it up thank you so much a man who truly impacted my life and more everybody today I want to introduce you to a very special and very dear person who influenced my life so greatly his name is Daniel Tyler Ponky for those who don't know him I'd like to give a little background and bio Di Daniel greatly influenced my life and I wouldn't be here today if it wasn't for the teaching and mentoring that this man had in my life Daniel is known as an international musician speaker and coach he is known for his thought-provoking music that he combined the full spectrum of music. Daniel embarked on a five and a half tour across the United States entitled The Chameleon, where he built a following over 10,000 people from his photo blog as he performed at festivals, frat houses, parties, living rooms, bars and streets, bars and streets, and they didn't have any advanced booking, no Facebook, no Twitter, no TikTok. They just went out and made it happen. 2007, he discovered yoga and meditation. He went to the Mumbai, the, the land of, of India, and it was there he began to interact with music in a much different way. In the winter of 2008, he began to hike through the Himalayas and as a vision of an empowered humanity, he came upon the lyrics of a song that's called A Brave New World. And from that day, he met his beloved wife, Mai Sigiv, was born. A year later, they brought the music and the message to Mumbai. They began working with local musicians and performed at colleges, clubs, and festivals. The Blue Frog, Kala Goda, the Celebration Bandra, as well as intertwining with the various paths and workshops for the slow called slum areas of Davari. The recording of Brave New Worlds, The Time Is Now, began with the intention of collaborations with diverse production and a unique set of culturally diverse musicians for each track. He began interacting with business leaders from India to Israel, West Germany, US, and back to India. To this day, Daniel is no longer with us. He's in heaven looking down on us. But if you go and put in the words, full moon rising and a brave new world, you can see the heart, the soul, and the intention of this man. October 9, 2007, I boarded a plane with a one-way ticket to India. In the material sense of it all, there was no reason to go, but there was something stirring in the chest area, you know what I mean? So for one year I traveled, got sick, met lots of locals, got sick again, bought a bike and traveled some more, learned a bunch of meditation techniques, got sick again, for a lesser time, trekked the Himalayas with a guitar on my back and that is where we will stop for a moment. For over a year I traveled this culturally and spiritually rich land, interacting with locals and travelers, and learned a great deal about myself, my patterns, and the ways of a world so foreign to the norms of my California-based life. And I realized, beliefs shape reality. They can cause illness, religious and spiritual wars, mediocrity, greed, jealousy, and the list goes on and on and on to poverty, something so in your face in India. So I started to think back to all my interactions with these so-called impoverished and I realized that internally they lived and expressed themselves in extremely radiant and abundant ways. But externally, the beliefs have kept them living in unfit conditions and those beliefs are ingrained from birth. Hmm. 
Then I begin to think about my external abundance, but my internal poverty, my deep-seated fears and judgments, my disempowering beliefs about intimacy, my lack of confidence and freedom of expression, and all the mental barriers that hold me back from sharing my gifts, my ideas and visions, and knowing that I can make a difference. So from that point, I begin strengthening new empowering beliefs by doing what I do best, writing songs. After an extensive period of writing, it came, yeah, as they say, like a flash in the night. There I was standing in front of a vast sea of people that were all living their lives to the fullest. And together we were all gesturing our hands in the air to the beat of Brave New World. From that full moon night on December 12, 2008, a plan was set into action and the best thing for those disempowering beliefs stuck in my head to do was get out of the way. Well, they didn't. But over time, the new empowering beliefs became more integrated, eradicating the limiting ones. During this transformational time, I established an invaluable partnership with my Segev who shared the vision with me. We moved to Mumbai, played gigs and festivals, did workshops, and shared this music and message with everyone we would come into contact with. And then, the album process began. The first thing we did was set an intention to walk the talk that each song message represents. My collaborative nature led us to recording each song with a different producer from a distinct musical background and a unique set of culturally diverse musicians taking us on an extraordinary journey across India, Israel, Egypt, and the USA, which is all painted in the seconds of this album. We started at the end of 2009 with the title track, Brave New World. All we knew was that we wanted an anthem, and Mumbai bass producer Tino Francozzi delivered that and much, much more. He gave us a foundation to shape the whole album around, and that is exactly what we did. The opening track, Walking Through, was just a funky little acoustic riff that I would freestyle over in villages across India while I walk through all the changes in my life. I would have never imagined that the final version would be a cappella electronica, inspired by my great friend Sekuoto in Mumbai, along with vocal people producer Shai Fishman. To top it off, Kids Choir. It just felt right, so we went for it. In the next track, we honor the Hindu god of protection, Ganesh, as we move into my personal motorcycle journey through India in the faith that was instilled by coming out alive after ducking and dodging on the chaotic roads. Arranged by Indian producer Miso Das, this track went through four studios in India, Israel, and the US before it was finished. Mumbai 2611 was channeled through me from a daughter who died with her father in the tragic event. Come to find out almost three years later, the production style and content helped to bring closure to people involved and reminded me our inevitable death is a reason to live. Well-known classical Indian producer Bhavdeep Jaipurwali came in at the last moment to complete the authenticity of the production. In searching, I let it all out, transforming the rage I once had towards spiritual and religious past comparing and competing with one another into the light reflection of the playground we call life. In the recording process with Israeli rock icons Raz Klinghoffer and Avi Shabbat, it went from our least favorite to our favorite track. Hi? Well, I'll go straight to the album insert on this one. Three years, 10,000 miles, and 5,400 meters above the substance-based life I lived in the not-so-distant past, I found myself sluggishly pulling over the final pass of the Annapurna circuit. It was in these moments that the melody of Hi came to me like a welcome friend there to aid in my completion of the circuit. The lyrics are a reminder of all the blissful experiences of deep meditation that lifted me to great heights since I had given up drugs and alcohol on my 30th birthday. This track, our first single, which we owe immense gratitude to Uri Reshef, was produced by 21-year-old Israeli producer Joseph Eshine while hosting the soulful backing vocals of the African Hebrew Israelite nation of Jerusalem. This completes the first half of the journey and segues into three tracks that I had the pleasure of producing with the assistance of a few dear friends. Wonderful Invention was co-produced by Kobe Farhi and Amir Gilboa. It brought me into using day-to-day -day household items as musical instruments while reflecting on the power of my words to create reality. Earth Speaks Up, featuring the powerful vocals of Eliza Haba, might be the most important universal message right now as we all see Mother Earth speaking very loud in her actions. Blue Water Rise shuffled through three producers before coming back to its original simplicity and to the conception point of Egypt where sea meets the desert. This track focuses on the power of our hearts to move mountains, or rivers, and was inspired by the frequency of 528 and the grandmother drum. Each track complementing one after another brings us to the conclusion, two back-to-back -back orchestral productions. Soldier Soul Service Disguise is the opening of a soldier's eyes to the lies of our time through the cinematic production style of Prem Shai Hermon. 
which leads us into the transformative conversations awakening between us directly into the title track, Brave New World. This is the fourth and final production of the song, skillfully arranged by Israeli producer Amitai Periente, and serves the vision and our anthem of personal responsibility and empowerment through love in action. The vision became an album, the album became the stories, and the stories changed our lives forever. This has been our gift, and now we offer it to you on a pay-as-you-wish basis. Because to us, the places we've reached over the course of the three-year production are priceless. Hi. Today I'm showing up here with a bit of a rant, something that is real to me in this moment. And it has been for a while, and I haven't spoke to it, and I'm going to speak to it publicly because this could potentially serve. I hear this a lot. I, I, I talk to a lot of people from different walks of life, uh, game-changing, you know, entrepreneurs, uh, young high school students, all across the board. And there's this rhetoric in American society that is uncommitted. And when people speak themselves in a space, it, it comes off like, oh, I kind of do this, or I, I sort of want that, and it sort of looks like this, or kind of like this. There's no kind of anything. You're either there or not. And what I imagine is why people speak with this rhetoric is they're, they're afraid to commit to anything because not because they're afraid to commit, but because of what people might think about them when they speak themselves powerfully into a room. I had a client this morning in a session come and talk about how she stood in front of this group of, of, of women leaders and she kind of spoke powerfully. And I paused her. I said, wait, wait. Did you speak powerfully? Did you kind? She's like, I spoke powerfully. I said, well, then why did you put the kind of? And, and we navigated that and found out that the reason why she used kind of was because she was thinking about what they were thinking about it. How can we take responsibility for what anybody thinks about what we do? All we can control is ourselves and how we show up. She showed up powerfully. She felt it in every cell of her body. And somebody else could have had a, a, a friend's mom who passed away in another continent and could have been mind consumed by that so didn't even hear what she said. But that has nothing to do with the powerful way that she showed up. She didn't kind of do anything. She, she spoke powerfully. She showed up powerfully. And I hear leaders in, in, in big business. I listen to a lot of podcasts and, and fill my mind with, with people, game-changing leaders around the world. But I hear this over and over again, even in their world. So I, I, go, I go to think, I go, how do they build what they build using this rhetoric? And I land upon, they probably have a lot of kind of energy in their world. And actually, I'll nix out the probably. I'm sure that they have a lot of kind of energy in the world because there's a lot of kind of energy in our world. People that are half committed to everything that they do, the programs they take, the apps they use, the, the, the health that they want, the business that they want to create, the lifestyle that they want to create, everything is half committed. So let's be one of the smart ones who speaks ourselves powerfully into the room. And if anything is going to come out of our mouth that is kind of pause slow down think about what you're about to say into the world so that you can speak it with power otherwise there's no need in saying it at all because kind of creates more kind of sort of creates more sort of and who wants a world full of kind ofs and sort ofs we're better than that I love you. Suli, we are Kuti, CEO of the Lighthouse Organization. We are driven by a single goal, and that is to help domestic violence victims. Remember, a victim can be your neighbor, a friend, or a family member. 
We are here to support all these victims who are suffering in silence. If you would like to donate to our cause, you can go into our website, www.thelighthouseorg.net. Senior Care Authority is a one-stop solution for helping you locate senior living options. We understand the care, the costs, and the safety records of hundreds of communities, from assisted living and memory care, to independent living and even skilled nursing. We help families cut through the complexity to make courageous, informed decisions under difficult circumstances. Hey, are you looking to get blinged out? Well, look no further. Boss Lady Bling Blingy has all the bling you need. You can find us online at Lady Blingy 4 on IG or Lady Blingy on Facebook or www.BossLadyBlingBlingy here in sunny San Diego at 2031 Commercial Street, San Diego, California. Call us at 619-617-4586. Hey, super quick video here on curiosity. Having a really powerful conversation with a very young, young woman today. And we're born into this space of curiosity. I watch my boy read everything. He's curious about everything. He's curious about my nose. He's curious about the way digital things move, the way sticks move. I mean, everything is curiosity. And then we go into our schools. Um, a lot of people's parents just beat the curiosity out of them. It's, it's do this, do this, learn this, take this test, do this thing. And curiosity falls by the wayside. And me, I truly believe that true freedom is through curiosity somebody has a different point of view from us rather than think that they're wrong what do we got curious and asked a lot of questions about well, well tell me more about that to me there's a level of of of, of enthusiasm of curiosity i mean curiosity a level of enthusiasm a level of of elation and, and a deep level of freedom that comes from being curious about everything and we can even do that as a mindful practice and get ultimately curious about where this walnut came from. Hmm. This could have come from a tree in the middle of Brazil for all we know. Where's the origination of this, this one walnut right here? And why is it shaped in such a way? Walnuts are supposed to be really good for the brain. They're shaped like brain tissue. God. Nature and its chaos and perfection. Curiosity. I'm free. <laughs> Have a good day. I love you. I wish you all the gems of curiosity on this fine, fine Sunday. We'll speak soon. Bye for now. Okay, so first things first. I hope this isn't news, but we're all gonna die. Inevitably. What's going to happen? At least the bodies. <laughs> so what if today was that day, the last day of this life? What would you do? Who would you call? Who would you deeply spend time with? What food would you enjoy to the fullest of, of capacity? I invite you to ponder that and, and share with me here. And then go do one or all those things. And I invite you in, in, in the food part to just slow down as much as possible and savor like it's the last meal. Have fun. <laughs> Have a beautiful day. Happy Sunday. Thank you for your interest in In Flight USA and our newest publication, Biz Avjets USA. We serve general and business aviation throughout the U.S. For more information on submitting articles or advertising in our publications, visit inflightusa.com. Thank you. Biz Abjets USA Magazine is a new publication to the business aviation industry. 
The business aviation is a growing and thriving industry. We plan to bring you all the latest trends and news. We also plan to bring you new information about new airframes, systems, and interiors to market. Feel free to visit bizavjetsusa.com. a belief system, a habit, a pattern that has stemmed back to your childhood. Now that could be something along the lines of um, not speaking your truth um, because you were told to um, be seen but not heard. Um, that could be shutting yourself down because you were afraid um, of being yelled at or even being physically abused uh, when you were a child. And in my case, um, is this perpetual need uh, to be liked because I always felt alone. Um, so this people pleasing. And I want you to, to think about that for a minute, how that's showing up in your world on an ongoing basis. And the reason I want you to think about this because I had a client today that, that got in touch with, with a pattern that stemmed from her childhood and how it's showing up for her life now. And she asked me, she said, well, how do I break through this? And it's, it's such a thing in our society and our culture to break through things. And I just, I, I tend to take a different approach. And it seems to be much more sustainable when it comes to pattern, sustainable pattern change. And that's through grace, not force. Uh, to become more like a dancer, to become more like water. Um, to where the pattern arises, but there's enough presence of mind and there's enough awareness to be able to see it for what it is, to pause, to go, oh, there it is again, and then to pivot and take a different action. It's not about staring the pattern in the face and going, oh, I must break through this pattern. It's more about, ah, there you are again. Hi, pattern. Cool. You're not serving me. Let's move in a different direction. It's like a dancer. See how that works for you. I'm curious to hear what your thoughts are on this and how this perspective uh, could support or not support <clears throat> you. And I'm also curious to see how uh, the breakthrough method has served you because I know at certain points in my life that has served me too. I just found that when there's a breakthrough, it, it comes back. It comes back and then I can break through it again and it just takes so much energy. And I can just pause and breathe and watch and pivot and move and, and Life is more like a, a dance of my patterns and, and the new patterns that I want to step into. And it's, it's not so jagged. Um, it just feels more alive for me. Anyways, have a beautiful day. That's my, my words for today. <laughs> I love you. The hunger and the thirst in me And we walk around with the bottle frowns Thinking, God, could you do it to me? Oh, oh, because I, I realize 
a blessing away to get highs when I I'll go deep inside and let all the doubts subside And then the great cloud of the mind It opens up to the colors of divine And I find I'm one with everything Even the planets, moons and suns And that's all I need to get high We are the change we seek in the world Boys and girls, brothers and sisters Joy, love, and bliss. And that's all I need. 